The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement House Christian Center, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Fasten your seatbelt, get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the anointed word of God that will change your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. All right, sit down briefly in God's wonderful presence. You know how fathers are. You have your own plan and they just have a way of inserting their own plan into it and you have to comply. In reality, I didn't come here to speak. I came to sit. Amen. Why sitting? Because the Bible says, they that eat at an altar are partakers with the altar. So I, my plan was just to come and sit for another seven days and then partake of the altar and so that I can go into the new year well. Amen. Uh, so, um, and after partaking, um, I would go upstairs and I will kneel down and then he will place some of his honor on me so that I can run the race of the new year because it is honor that makes congregations obey. He says, and I will place some of my honor on you that the congregation may be obedient. So what obeys you in life is a function of the honor that has been placed on you. So that was my plan, you know, but um, that is that I should share something, amen. So I'm going to try to share something uh, briefly. Uh, why do we keep coming to Harvest House? It's our Jerusalem church. It's my Jerusalem church. I'm a member of Harvest House Christian Center. I'm a member of the Harvest Nation. Amen. Where you are a pastor is different from where you are a member. Any pastor who is a pastor somewhere and is not a member somewhere is suspect. This is my church. I'm a member of the Harvest House Nation. Amen. And um, it's a great privilege. Uh, I, was, I was telling those that came to me, Daddy, that what amazes me is the fact that we, we, we keep coming. You know, we've been coming now since 1996. But what we noticed is not the same us that return. You know, it's not the same us that return. Every time we return, we find that there's a transformation. The last time I came uh, uh, in December, our church did not have an address in Lagos. But as I speak to you, the church has an address in, in Lagos. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for the perfection of the testimony to share with my dad. So I, I just want to encourage my brothers, just keep coming. Amen. Just keep coming. As you keep coming, you keep changing. And it's not just about uh, gymnastics or drama. Just, just keep coming. Tell anybody, but just keep coming. And tell somebody, just keep coming. On Sunday come, midweek come, all of the programs come. I will consider any son of this house on Sirius who is not here now. So where are you? What are you doing? So just keep coming and you'll see you keep changing. I just want to leave you with a thought. I have 8 minutes 38 seconds. I hope it won't take that long. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 35 and I'll bring up my spiritual dad. The Bible says, then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind and I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house shall come and bow down to him for a piece of bread and a morsel of bread and say please put me in one of the priestly positions that I may eat the a piece of bread. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. By way of bringing up my father this last day, listen very carefully. It's a year of governmental grace and exceeding fruitfulness. But there are two things that I want you to be mindful of. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. For that word to come to pass, there are two things. There's who you must be and there is what you must do. As my father comes up this Lord's Day, those are the two things that you're thinking about. 
who I must be and what I must do. It's who you must be for governmental grace and exceeding fruitfulness to come to pass. And then there's what you must do. Now, if the outcome of this year doesn't turn out the way we said it, the way that, the way that said it, it's going to be because somehow you refuse to become who you should be or you refuse to do what you should do. Whenever you're seeing fulfillment in any place, in any life, it's a function of who they are and something they do. So in 1 Samuel 2, verse 35 to verse 36, the Bible says, I'm going to raise up for myself a faithful priest. So who he is, is faithful. And what he does, is going to do according to what is on God's heart and on God's mind. Now what is on God's heart and mind for us this year is governmental grace and exceeding fruitfulness. Let me hear that, governmental grace and exceeding fruitfulness. So, there is who you have to be. You have to be faithful to that. And then everything you do should be according to that. Who you are is that you're faithful to that and what you do should be according to what is on God's heart and mind. You're not just doing things anyhow. I have five minutes, but I'll share a testimony with you. Around this time last year, somebody uh, in Lekki just woke up and gave us a piece of land. A piece of land. Now, no, no, don't clap. He's not with me anymore. So give us a piece of land. Now, it is land, but there's what to do with it. So this is land in Lekki. What do I do with it? Well, it was my first land in the city of Lagos. You don't build on the first. So God said to me, it's your first land in Lagos. Take it to your spiritual father and mother, Reverend Bimini Aboda and Pastor Adiola Boda, and give it to them as your first land. That was, I think, the, maybe the last week or so in December. One year later, my dad spoke words of my life. One year later, at about the same December, a young man called me and said, Sir, I have a dynasty seed to sow into your life. Here is two plots of land for you, two for your wife, and one for all of your children. Now, now, while you're clapping about that, I have three more minutes. Your clapping is deducting from my time. Now, if I did not do that, I would not have had it. Don't joke with this here. Be intentional and be deliberate about your outcomes. Well, I took the land to my youngest child and I said, you are now a landowner. She's six years old. She's six. Now, I didn't have a land until I was in my 40s. She has land. But there was something you did which was according to what was in God's heart and mind. And there is who you were. You were faithful to that and the outcome. So don't struggle with this year. What you want to do about the year, every time mama comes up, you switch. Who should I be? What should I do? As papa comes up this evening now, this morning right now, who should I be? What should I'm concerned about the gymnastics of my generation. Too much noise. Who should I be as he's talking? What should I do? Now, if you operate like that, there are certain outcomes. The first thing, he says, and I will build him a show house. The first thing is, if you operate like this, what this year will be sure? The governmental grace will be sure. Are you there? The exceeding fruitness will be sure. Prophecy is not just made sure. There is what to do. 
go to Genesis, say to Abraham, I know Abraham, you command his household after me to do judgment and justice that he may bring it to pass. It's not just going to come to pass, there's what to do. So, number one, he's going to be sure. The second thing is, he now said, if you are this kind of person, you will walk before my anointed forever. The second thing is, it means that you will have a lasting walk. That's legacy. You know what is on his heart, you do it, you are this kind of, you will walk before he's anointed forever. You have a lasting walk, legacy. I mean, there are sometimes people are hoping to pull you down and all that, and they're just wasting their energy. Because those that are pulling you up are bigger than those that are pulling you down. You get my point. So, you walk before my anointed forever. Then number three, if you do this, it says, it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow. What that means is those who are faithful and who do according to what is on God's heart, which is exceeding great and fruitfulness, the people who don't do and who are not that will come to bow. Are you there? So it means in a house, not everybody is doing it. Those who are doing it in a house will forever take a subservient position to those who, are, those who are not doing it. So those who are doing it will be in a class. Those who are not doing will now come to bow to those who are doing it. Let's press on. Saying to them, please, I beg you for a piece of silver and muscle of bread. So number three is that those who do according to what is on God, God's mind and who are who God wants them to be, those ones will now be in custody of the resources. And those who don't do will now come to bow and beg. You will not beg this year. So those who are doing will have the resources. Those who are not doing will bow and beg those who are doing for the resources 13 seconds more. And they will say, please put me in the priestly office that I may have a piece of bread. So lastly, those who do will maintain their office. Those who don't do. So as I welcome my dad today, all you're asking is, oh God, as the Reverend Bimini Ebola speaks, what must I do and who should I be? My time is up. God bless you. Thank you, sister.